Welcome. Today we're going to talk about scripting for subforms. Our agenda, we're going to talk about what is a subform, some use cases, we're going to talk about deluge with subforms, and then we're going to talk about some things to keep in mind. So what are subforms? Now we have this diagram here on the screen of certain uh, several rectangles within nested within other rectangles. And this is kind of to help identify as subforms embedded within other forms, kind of like nested within each other. Here's another diagram. If you look on the top, you have a form pointing to its record, right? So forms contain records. Similarly, if you look on the bottom side of that, we have form pointing to a record. And then together with it, we have a subform pointing at multiple records on the right side. Now, that might not be very clear, so let me go ahead and explain further. So what are subforms, right? As I mentioned, subforms are forms nested inside other forms that allow users to capture multiple instances of the same information. Subforms are collections of fields. It has all the fields available to it, just as a normal form has. Now, these fields are mapped to the subform collection a subform is considered its own entity. So here's another, another visual example. We have an order form. This order form collects information from its customer, like name, phone number, address, and email. Then it also uh, contains order information like the products, the quantity, price, and total. And then under that, it has order notes, right? So some of the information that this form might contain that only requires that once would be the customer information and the order notes. So that is fine in a, in a regular form. But the section that requires the different items, that is a perfect scenario where a subform will be used. See that because that section of the form contains multiple instances and those instances all have the same type of data. So some of the use cases, well, subforms may, uh, allow you to make forms very scalable. You do not need to know the preset number of entries necessary. All you need is to use the same format for all entries. Keep similar data sets into one place. Keep all business contacts in one record. They can help keep track of records with similar details. They dynamically relate to many records using lookup fields and subforms make references to other records of any number a lot easier. So let's look at deluge with subforms. Pre-populating subforms. Why do we pre-populate a subform field? Well, let's say that we have a form with active business partners. And after selecting a specific partner, we want their address to populate in the subform. Well, this could be both convenient and saves time during record keeping. So here's a visual for that. So we have a table with two records on them. The record ID on the left side, it's what's going to be stored in our lookup. Now what our lookup shows in the subform field is the second column there with a the business name. And the information that we want are the business address and the industry fields. Here's how the subform actually looks. We have two records under. The column with the lookup field on the left side for business name, that is where we select the lookup. As we select it, the information on the right fields are going to be pre-populated. In order for this to work, we're going to need to create a workflow. We want this workflow to run when the user selects the business name. When interacting with a name or address field, we will have to use a composite field name such as name that first name or address that address line one. Here's how we create that workflow. We choose a form, then we select when we want this workflow to be run. In this case, we want it to run when a record is created or edited. We tell it to trigger this workflow when the user input of a field changes. And in this case, the field name is going to be the business name. Here's a deluge script. 
we select the variable that's going to hold all our business information. In this case, we call that business info. The creator ID of business record will be ID. And in the row of our subform and the lookup that triggers the script, it's on the right side. As you can see, we use the word row before the field. This is how we let uh, the loose script know that we're talking about a specific row within a subform. Now, industry, as you can see there, is our single line field. The industry field is in the same row as our lookup. And the industry field from our business record is stored in our fetch variable. These are the address fields in the same row as the lookup field that triggered the script. The address fields in our fetch variable and our composite field names. So validating subform fields. Why validate subform fields? Well, just like regular form fields, you can perform validation in subform fields. If we have a business trip planner, we will want validation on our start date and end date to keep our data clean. Here's a, vis a visual example of that. We have a form, a subform in this case, with a start date and end date. If that data is entering into these fields, it can make our data dirty. For this example, we will use multiple workflows. Our workflows will be similar. We will just be changing our trigger input field. What we want is for our end dates not to be before our start date and vice versa. Additionally, we want our start date to be after the current date. And if our validation triggers, we can clear the subform row so that the user can re-enter their data. Here's how we create the workflows. Once again, we choose the form name. We tell it to trigger when the record is created or edited. We tell the trigger of the workflow to be on a user input of a field. And the field that we choose is the start date. For the second workflow, we choose a different field name of end date. Here's the deluge script. We create a conditional. We tell it that the fields are contained within a row in a subform. So we tell it that if the start date field is greater than or equal to the end date field, to put an alert telling the user to please ensure that your trip start date is before your trip end date. Then we set the, the value of the start date to null so the user can try again. Here's the other part of the workflow. Second conditional, we'll tell it to check for the start date field to be less than or equal to the current date. If so, then an alert telling the user to please ensure that your start date is after today will be shown and then we're going to put the value of the start date field to null. Once again, so the user can try again. Here's for the second workflow. We're going to check that the end date field value is less than or equal to the start date field value. And then if so, we're going to alert the user once again for them to check that the trip end date is after your trip start date. If it does trigger, we're going to put the value of the end date field to null so the user can try again. Now, another example would be inserting a row into a subform with Deluge. Why would we want Deluge to insert a row into a subform? Well, let's say we have a product form. And whenever a product is added, we want it to be added to a specific product catalog. Here's a visual of that. A lookup field we will insert into the row with the creator ID of the product. And on the right side, we will also be inserting into the row the price field. Here's the table. The left column contains the record ID. This is what we will insert into the lookup in the subform. The second column is what the subform looks up. The third column is a lookup field to our catalog. And the last column 
is the other field we'll be, we will be inserting into the subform. We will use a workflow for this as well. We want our workflow to run whenever a new product is submitted. Since our product form has a lookup for its catalog, we will use that to insert into the correct subform. When we insert our row into the subform, its creation must follow the format form linked the subform link name. This is how we create the workflow. We choose a form. In this case, it's a form called products. We're going to run this workflow when a new record is created. And we're going to trigger it on a successful form submission. Here's the Deluge script. The new row variable is a variable that will act as a row to insert. It is mapped to our subform fields. Now on the right side, whenever you create a row to insert into a subform, you must follow this format. Form, link name, that subform link name. We treat a row variable like a collection and update its fields the same way. We use ID here because the product name is a lookup and lookup fields use IDs for their values. We then create a generic collection and insert a row into that collection. We do this because collection is a supported format to insert into a subform. We then fetch for our catalog information using the lookup in our product form. We then insert our generic collection containing our new row into the subform. Now notice that we use our fetch variable and then our subform nickname to insert that. Now let's talk about deleting a row with deluge. Why would we delete a row with deluge? Well, just like our insert row example, Whenever a product is deleted, we also want to delete it from our catalog. Here's a visual. When we delete a record that is a lookup field, we're going to get an empty field like this. Well, on the right side, we want to get rid of not just this field, but the entire row. Once again, for this, we're going to use a workflow. We're going to want our workflow to run when the record is deleted. And deleting a row in a subform will require us to temporarily copy the subform, clear it, and then reinsert the row skipping the row that has the empty lookup. We can clear a subform easily with fetch variable that subform linking that clear. So we create our generic collection variable early this time because we will be using it in our loop. We then fetch our catalog using the lookup field in our product form. We're going to want to loop through our subform like a list. Product is our subform now. We are using our fetch variable to loop through it because our fetch variable holds the catalog information. We then create our new row variable inside the loop because each loop is a new row. Row creation will still follow the form link name, the subform link name. The if statement here is saying we want every product where the lookup field does not have an empty value. We then update the new row fields like normal, but we insert a row into our collection because otherwise we would lose it on the next loop. Null just means a value that is empty. It is different from zero. Null means nothing. We have to clear our catalog subform, otherwise we would get duplicate records. We then insert our generic collection variable into our subform like normal. This time our collection holds multiple rows. Now here are a few things to keep in mind. Subforms allow you to not know how many fields you need, only the format. The new row creation follows the form link name that subform link name format. When inserting into fields with composite fields like name or address, you need to use the composite field names. You can easily clear a subform using fetch variable that subform link name that clear. You can loop through a subform like a list. In order to delete a row in a subform, you will have to recreate the subform just without the row you wish to delete. You can perform disables and validations on subform fields just like you could in normal forms. 
and thank you very much for your time. I hope you found this video very educational.